What's up guys, Alvaro here with Particle School and in this tutorial I'll show you how to scatter particles over an object surface and keep it aligned to this object's surface using uh, its normals. And I'll show you a simple way and a better way. In this better way we're using data operators and then we'll make these particles collide with each other using a keep apart operator. So let's begin. In this scene we have this sphere, you can download it on this video description and we have our school here. So let's scatter this school on this surface here. Let's switch off the display selected with edge faces and let's press 6 to open our particle view. Let's create a standard flow, make sure we're, sh we're showing like 100 on our viewport. Let's emit all the particles in the first frame and let's replace this position icon for a position object. Let's get our sphere here. Now let's display it as geometry and let's replace our shape for a shape instance. Now we can get our school here. Yep, and it's all black because of the material. So let's switch off the acquire material and let's change it to a bluish color. Cool. Now the particles are all scattered here on this sphere, but it's all kind of run with this random rotation. So let's, first of all, let's give it some separation. I think fifth is fine. And let's delete this speed. Now there is no option here that we can align it to those particles to the surface. But there is a very simple way, it's a quick way, but it only, it only works if your particles will be static on the object surface. And you can add, uh, it's kind of trick. So you can add a uh, speed by surface here, get the surface, and now all the particles will travel uh, on the surface normals. So in this direction, then you can get this rotation here and align it to speed space follow and change the Y rotation to 90 maybe. Yeah. And now all the particles are aligned to the surface, but it's going away like this. So you can here on the position object, you can lock it on a meter and now your particles are locked to the, to the surface and it's aligned. But you can't really, it, they are all facing that direction and you are already using a rotation operator so you can't add another one to make them rotate only on like the Z axis. So let's delete this and let's make it in a cool way using, the, using a data operator. So let's add a data operator here and let's call it Align to surface. Let's check the auto update and open our data flow. Now here we want to output the information as using an output standard and we want to output as a quaternions. So in our now, now we have to get the this sphere here and get the normal values of the surface. So let's get a select object and here let's add our sphere. Now with this geometry we can get the values of the point normals here. So let's select the point normal here and now it will get the point normal of this surface and it have like a lot of point normals here. 
So we have to specify like this particle is getting the information of which point normal in this surface. And we want it to get the closest point by surface and then read this value, this point normal. So let's add another geometry. As you can see, it needs some information here. This, I think it's a pair value. And here we have this option, closest point by closest, and yeah, closest point by surface and closest point by normal. Any of these will work. Let's get the closest point by surface. And now it will look for like, like we have all our, all of our particles are here and it's looking for the closest point by a surface. So let's specify which surface, this one. And now the operator is satisfied. And we can connect this here, and this one is satisfied as well. Now we have an uh, object to know which point normal, and we have in you we know where each particles are getting this point normal uh, values from. So now let's add an uh, input standard and let's get the transformation matrix of our particles. This TM here. It's a transformation matrix. Transformation matrix uh, are position, rotation, scale, and I'm pretty sure that it's translation values as well. So it's pretty much uh, everything here. <laughs> so uh, now we want to get the Z orientation of this transformation matrix here of our particles. And we want to align the Z values to these values that we have here. So let's use a function to do it. And here, the first parent, we want to be a vector. Yeah, it's fine. But the second one, we want it to be a matrix. And now let's connect our matrix here. And here on the function, we have this align M2, Z2, V1. M2 is this M2 here. It's the matrix and it's the second operand. So we will align this M2, the Z values of this matrix here to the vector one values. And yeah, it's fine. Now we have a matrix value, a matrix here with all the uh, position, rotation, and scale. And we want to output it as a quaternions. And the quaternions are only rotation values. So if you try to connect it here, particle flow will create a convert here. And what this convert will do, will get, uh, it will get only the rotation component of the, this matrix here, are these values here. So it will discard all the position and scale, and we to get only the rotation component, and it will send it to our quaternions. And as you can see, now it's aligned here, aligned to our surface, and it's pretty much what we're, uh, we're going to do in this tutorial. So let's uh, hide our first school here. No, let's keep it there, because we will have to change something later. And now check it out. Our particles are there and we can add some speed to those particles because like the in the other the other example they were locked to a point and they couldn't move but now they can let's make this speed a random 3d and let's see what's what happens nothing because it's locked to the emitter let's make sure that we switch it off and now our particles are going randomly, but we can keep it locked to the surface, but not to a point, only to a surf, to the object surface. So it can uh, travel freely, but on the surface. And we can do it using a lock bond. Just make sure you put the lock bond below this align to surface here. Let's put this shape here and now let's select our geosphere here and let's select this option lock to surface. 
And in the lock to surface, we want to restrict the particles to the surface. And now check it out, it's locked there, but with no force on the position lock bond. So it will run freely to the surface, but it will stay on the surface. And let's take off the, the description. And let's in this rotation lock bond, let's take the, the force off as well. Now my particles are going crazy like this. Let's make this speed a bit lower, slower. And yeah, it's cool. Let's make the this shape a bit smaller as well. Great. And now we can add um, rotation here. So with a random rotation, all my particles will be random, like rotated. And when we activate the align to surface, it will keep the X and Y rotation, but it will align the Z rotation to the uh, to our surface. So it will keep the other ones, but it will align it to the surface. And now my particles are pretty much aligned and we can even use a uh, speed space follow. So our particles can look to the direction that they are going. But check it out, it's not working. The, let's focus on this school here. It's going down that direction. So let's change this Y value here. And it's not moving a lot. So now, now it's going in the right direction, mm, kind of. Yeah, this one is going, but if you have a look, this other one here, it's not going. And I could realize that the way to fix it, it's on our object. This object here, it should be looking on the X direction. So let's here on our hierarchy, let's on affect pivot only. Let's change our pivot direction and let's make the Z, the X, in fact, axis to be uh, on this direction, the direction that our schools are looking. Now here on, let's switch off and switch on, on just to make sure and now here on rotation, let's zero this Y value. And check it out. Now all of our particles are looking on the right direction. And that's great. Now let's make them collide to each other and let's make it using a keep apart operator instead of, uh, you can do it using the MP word so M particles, but it will keep a bit heavier and it will slow down your system a little bit. And sometimes it gets some jittering. So with the keep apart, let just make sure that your keep apart on top of the lock bond, not below it. Otherwise your particles can unlock this from the surface. And what the keep apart will do, it will create a kind of force field around your sphere. And this force field have this size here, 10 with a falloff of 10. So let's change it to the relative part to particle size. So you can have uh, here on your shape instance, you can have some variation and this, this size will be related to, to your particles. And let's make it like 100 here on core and zero on falloff for now. And we don't want our particles to accelerate, so let's switch it off and let's edit a speed limit to it. And let's make the speed limit be 50, just like our speed. So 50. And I think that's it. So check it out. Now our particles are kind of colliding to each other. And you can like 
using the core, it will kind of collide in a hard way. It's like a hard surface. Let's just add a cache here so it goes faster. And with the fall off, it will kind of collide a bit softly. And you can decrease this force here to something like five. So it, it, it goes even softer. And now your particles are kind of, check this one. It kind of collide and then it turns. I think it's pretty cool like this. And this is speed limit, it prevents the particles from going like very fast it's if you have like a lot of force. So let's put a lot of force here and now let's check it out. The particles collide and kind of goes very fast. And acceleration will keep your particles accelerating so we, we don't want it as well. Let's make it like this with like a very low force. So that's it, thanks for watching, bye!